Hey there, this is Angie M of A Life by Angie M. Just wanted to pop on here quickly. I've been meaning to do a declutter and this is involving makeup. I'm not really decluttering essential oils and I'm doing a little bit of top down filming. Unfortunately, I lost a screw from my big tripod. So when I top down film, I'm using a small tripod on my desk and it's not exactly the most fantastic, but it works. And so you'll sort of see the legs. Who cares? It's a thing. All right, so I've actually been going through a lot of stuff and I think what I will do is I will start with something that I finished off. And it's probably a good thing to work, to talk about because it is a, a moisturizer. So this is the post-workout mattifying moisturizer from the Clinique Fit line. I tried it out because I was trying out the mascara from the Clinique Fit line when my Clinique Longwear really stopped being sold in both Ulta and Sephora, which is very sad. Not that I, you know, don't like going to the mall and, you know, going to a department store to get my Clinique stuff, but it seemed like it had gone down on their website, like maybe it was being pulled. So I tried the mascara from this line and allegedly it was supposed to be the same formula as the long wear, just with a different brush. And we're gonna talk about mascaras in a little bit more detail in a minute because I have been on a mascara journey so I really use this up. It, it's not a moisturizer. This for me and for my skin, while it had some moisturizing properties, was really more like a light duty mattifying primer. So when I talk about a light duty, something that I think I'm gonna declutter, but I might feel differently about it in a hot minute, is this guy here, the Becca Ever Matte Poreless Priming Perfector. I started with a small travel size of this guy and I really, really liked it. So I got the bigger size because I made it through the travel size and I didn't want to pick up another one. I use the Becca Backlight Priming Filter. I have those in travel sizes as well. It takes me forever to get through the travel size so I don't buy a full size because I don't want the full size to go bad. That primer I absolutely love and continue to love. I don't know. I don't know if there is a difference between the formula here and the formula in the travel size. I don't know if maybe the travel sizes I had were older, if something had changed, but I find with this one, so I don't use primers all over my face, generally speaking, because I don't wear foundation. I don't like the heavy feel of foundation. If I wear something, I wear something like Tarte's, oh, what is it? It's like their BB primer, which isn't very, very fair or Juice Beauties CC creams because they're super light. They set themselves. I don't have to worry about them. Uh, they blend in with my skin. So if they start to wear off, it doesn't look weird. And I have a weird, I have a weird skin tone. So at my fairest in the winter time, or if I live like a vampire outside of the sun, I have very, 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 very fair skin. Most foundation lines don't have a foundation fair enough for my skin. The problem is a lot of fair skinned persons seem to be cool tone. I know I've seen very fair warm tone or very fair neutral, both pull almost Oompa Loompa orange on me, which is strange because when I have a tan, like I do right now, my skin is a much warmer tone, but for some reason in fair foundations, it's really hard to capture. It's really hard to get. So I need more of a tinted moisturizer. I need something that's gonna blend in. So this guy goes primarily on my cheeks. I like it for prolonging blush wear. And I also like it on my forehead for things like my bronzer blush that I place there. My skin used to be more oily than it is now. I am 37 and just in the last two years, I've noticed a big difference in what my skin needs in terms of moisture. And before I had my daughter, I was using the travel size of this guy and you know, she's more than 20 months now. I was about two years ago. For whatever reason, when I apply this to my skin now, it basically just dries and sits on top and forms a smooth glass like surface. But it is absolutely awful because it doesn't grab any pigment. So I noticed that my favorite blushes weren't working with this guy. They weren't sticking to my skin. It was really awful, which makes me very sad. 
because I used to love this. It just doesn't work for me anymore, so I think it's, it's gonna go. I have found that I am looking for things that are going to give me more bang for my buck when I'm talking about primers. I want things that have more serum technology or have better things for the skin. Again, just because in the last two years, I've noticed a lot of changes with my skin. Something I am decluttering. This is Benefits Give Me Brow. So there it is in two. I forget exactly what this is called, but this is one of the blonde shades. So my hair is kind of weird. I feel like if I put a darker shade on, it, it was doing a little too dark, a little too much. But I was trying this out and I was trying it out with against um, Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Gel in Brunette. And that's a very warm, very lighter brown. And I liked how that looked. And when I swapped that, because I have number three, I have the darker brunette color as well in the Gimme Brow. When I compared that to the number three of the Gimme Brow, I really like the number three of Gimme Brow better. It just looks way more natural. It could be that I'm a little bit tan right now, so I could be regretting it, but honestly, by this winter, this thing is gonna be old. It's already starting to get a little crusty, and it's time for it to go. I love the product, though. Live for the product. I have a sample size of the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair. I am going to, I'm just gonna look at it in the light. There's probably about a half of the sample size left. It doesn't really do a whole lot for me, which I thought I would love it because I absolutely love their eye cream from this line. I got them in a sample set when I purchased two of my favorite mascaras, which we won't be talking about today. And I, I don't know. I don't know. There's, there's a part of me that wants to use it just because I have it. Again, I was just holding up the light to see what was left. Because I have it, I, I guess it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt my skin. It doesn't dry it out. It doesn't do anything weird to it. It doesn't make me break out. I just, I'm not sure exactly what it's supposed to do. And I'm wondering if it is for skin that has different needs than mine right now. All right, I'm debating on what next. A bronzer I am decluttering. I am decluttering the physician, I can't speak. The Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. I have, I am so close to pan on this thing, it's not even funny. I had the lighter shade and I found that that was too light for me. It made my skin look almost dirty. So I bought it in the regular bronzer shade, which I was nervous about because I am very fair. And I really, really, really liked it until I had things to compare it to. So I have, of course, I don't have it down here. The two, the Too Faced bronzer with the peacock. What is it? The the natural beauty bronzer. That, oh, hands down, is my favorite bronzer on the planet. It's gorgeous. It has this sheen. It's got sort of a a chocolatey color in it and a tanner color that's more like this. And together or on their own, they're just, they're fabulous. And they give, they give my skin such a healthy flush and the little bit of shimmer glow to it. It's not even shimmer. It's, it's hard to explain. It's like just this dusting of gold fairy dust in it that I, I love. And I've really stopped using this. I also have a NARS palette with a bronzer in it. And the bronzer in that palette is a little bit of a different tone and it, same thing, It while it doesn't have any of the glowiness to it, while it is matte, it just, it does something so much better for my skin than this guy does. And it's not that I don't love the Butter Bronzer formula, it's, it's a great bronzer, but I think maybe what it is is what I'm looking for with my skin right now doesn't match. And I don't want to hang on to this and let it go bad or let it go off scent because then I won't be able to use it. I'd rather just call it a day. I'm debating on what to talk about next. And I think I'm just gonna go with the brushes that are sitting in front of me. I am decluttering some brushes. So this guy, uh, Bestity, I made my husband order this entire set for me. A couple years ago, I was really into cream products for everything. And these brushes were fabulous. I had them in an assortment of sizes. They're super dense and they were just, they were perfect for using with, with cream products. I, I have since pretty much stopped using all of the cream face products that I used to use. The, the cream blush, 
I can't even remember if it was a Tarte or a Benefit Cream Blush. It's gone, it doesn't exist anymore. I applied that with my fingers. I was using this guy primarily with a blush color from Senegens because I found that if I got it on here quickly enough and on my skin, I was able to apply it nicely and this blended it out very well. But as you can see, I mean, it, it's dusty. It has been sitting for, for so long that I just, it, it's time for it to go. I think even if I got back into cream products, I probably would not use that brush anymore. I've, I've sort of evolved beyond that. I use a lot of Sephora brushes and I know, I know Sephora has its detractors. I really like most of their brushes. This here, I have probably had since I was in college which is very many years ago now. It's a slanted brush. You can, you can see she's really been used and she's been washed a lot, but her bristles have retained the color and this is the slanted eyeshadow brush. The reason I am decluttering it is I have so many similar brushes now and my favorite and hands down better than this is an Anastasia brush with a spoolie on the other end. It's finer, the bristles are a little bit stiffer and it, it does what I want it to do in terms of applying mascara pretty much on my lower lash line, which is what I would have used this for. Uh, same thing if I want to apply powder into my brows, which I'm not really into anymore. Yeah, this guy is a little dense and I know in theory I could use it to line my upper eyes, but I really don't do that. It's not my thing. And I have a number of smudge brushes that actually accomplish what I would use with this a whole lot better. So it, it's time. It, she's old. She served her purpose. I love her. Another Sephora brush I have, I got in a pack. And this is the concealer. I don't conceal. And what I do conceal, I use the Becca Under Eye, what is a brightener? the kind of peachy tone, and that works best with my finger. If I use a brush, it gets all streaky, and I don't apply anything with this. And I can see glitter in it, so I must have tried to use it as an eyeshadow brush, and I have so many eyes eyeshadow brushes that this, this just doesn't make sense for me to keep anymore. All right, so I've got a bunch of brushes from Candy Color, which I got... I think I got I think I got these and there are some more that I have that aren't in here because I'm using them and keeping them. I think I'm pretty much got these in a set that I got at Kohl's for like five dollars. They're actually decent brushes. I mean they're not bad at all. They're super duper stiff, super dense. But these particular brushes, I actually have brushes that I like more that are very similar. So I am going to declutter these. There's just no point in holding on to them. Something I have tried to make work. What is this guy? This is real. This is a real techniques. It's a glittery. It's a fan brush, and primarily I would use this. I don't even use this for highlighter. It doesn't. It doesn't pick up enough. And I have an it cosmetics brush that I can use for highlighting and blending that works better. I was using it. If you can see how red it is. I was using it for my NARS blush, Exhibit A, which is super, super pigmented and red and you need a really light hand. But this guy just, I felt like I never got the control I needed and I was trying to apply it in such a way that this just didn't work. I have other brushes that work better and I, I don't use them, I don't use them and it's time for him to go. I have an Eco Tools retractable face brush. I have had this guy forever, and he kind of kabukis out. So this is this is the brush. He's, he's real soft. Like it makes me sad to get rid of them. Like when I touch him, I'm just like, mm, maybe I kind of want to use him for blush. I have an hourglass blush brush that I I just adore. I've got a Sephora doe foot blush brush that I adore. I have other face brushes that I adore. And this guy just never gets used and he's getting older and older. And while this top is soft, if you touch the area down here, it's starting to get brittle and really shed when I do use it. And I think it's time, I think it's time to call it. This is really sad because this guy and I had another one, what was it the body shop? I had one from the body shop that was super expensive way back when I was in, in college and I loved them and I used them and I carried them in my bag. So that was why I had these guys 
because I used to bring them with me everywhere and use them for face powder. I don't use face powder and I haven't used face powder in more than 10 years for anything more than say blotting my nose. I don't even own any face powders right now. I think I have a sample of, of a Bobbi Brown powder to try that I haven't cracked into and I may not crack into at all because I just don't, I don't use them. And it's weird to say because my, two of my first makeup products growing up was a lip gloss and a CoverGirl compact. At six years old, I carried those dang things in my bag with me everywhere and I thought I was so awesome. And now I just, again, my skin used to be far more oily than it is now. It's, it's dried out significantly. I just don't have a use for it. I don't, if I travel, I have, I have a brush case that I travel with. So I bring my, my good brushes with me. It, it's a whole thing. Oh, lip products. I'm just gonna segue into this. The mascara and the eyeshadow are, are my least favorites declutter and I will get into why. I'm always torn when it comes to lip products because I love lip products but I just feel like lately I have been collecting the same products over and over again from different manufacturers and different formulas and I've been holding on to things I'm never really going to use because I think oh I bought them. Now I'm not a fan of keeping stuff that I know I'm not going to use. So if I buy something at Sephora or Ulta and I try it and it's awful, and I'm like, yeah, this is never going to work for me, I do return them. And I, and I get it. I know that people will say it's a waste till they throw them out. Well, here's the thing. Either they're going to throw it out or I'm going to throw it out. So at the end of the day, the products are already out there. If they don't sell, they're going to end up in a landfill anyway. If I throw them out, that's where they're gonna go. And I know that you can recycle certain things, but it's only the containers, the products need to be emptied. I'm not into dumping products down the drain and the water supply. I mean, there's just, there's a whole thing about this that I wish we had a better way of handling it. And someone, someone's gonna think of it. Probably not me, but someone's gonna think of something fantastic to do it with. Ah, uh, the first two I'm gonna start with, these are all actually painful. But uh, I have the Clarins Water Lip Stain in Rose Water and in Red Berry. These, oh, these smell amazing. They smell so fantastic. I almost wish they were in a squeezy tube instead. I think if they were in a squeezy tube, we probably wouldn't be talking because I'd be trying to make them work. They just don't last. I love lip stains and lip stain products because I hate having to reapply. So if it's a lipstick, if it's a lip gloss, if it's a whatever, it's gotta last on my lips. I can't constantly be rechecking to make sure it's on if I'm talking, if I'm drinking. And products have changed so much over the years. Like I remember when I first got into, you know, higher end makeup, I was in college. And the mall near my college had a Sephora. And up until that point, I had never been in a Sephora before. And I remember the first time I walked into Sephora, it was just, it was an experience. I, this whole new world of makeup was opened up to me and I've always loved makeup. So I started playing with stuff and just over the years I've discovered there are things I really like and things I don't like. And these, these guys just don't have the staying power. And I think a big part of the problem for me, and I discovered this, I, someone I know used to be really into Cenogens. And I did try their lip products and I discovered right away that for the first couple of days, they seemed to work just fine in terms of liquid lip and seemed to stay on. But my lips exfoliate super fast. So once those first layers of dead skin that held everything on were completely gone, putting it on what I would call an exfoliated lip because realistically that's what the product did. It exfoliated my lips. Once I got to the exfoliated lip and started wearing it, it wouldn't even last two hours before it was flaking off because my, my healthy lips underneath would self, your lips self exfoliate is what I'm trying to explain very poorly. And everyone's lips self exfoliate at different speeds. So, once that dead skin was off, that healthy skin was self exfoliating very quickly and it really made the product not work for me. I run into the same things with lots of liquid lips 
that promise to stay. So I look more for a stain because I like stains. These guys don't stick around. I've got a Bite Beauty lip stain, their new one in their oranges shade. Oh my goodness, that thing lasts and lasts and lasts and lasts when I wear it. I can eat, I can drink, and I'm comfortable and confident that it's gonna stick around. No, it's not completely transfer proof, but it holds to my lips. I have some lipsticks from MAC. I just recently discovered MAC products in terms of lipsticks that actually do last. Even their cream sheen products stick around on my lips a little bit. I've got, uh, oh, I'm gonna say her name wrong. I've got a Lisa Eldridge lipstick in Velvet Morning that is just gorgeous and I can use as a stain and she sticks around and she's absolutely the right color. So when I look at these, well, they're both shades I love. They do a good thing to my lips. They just don't stand up to some of the other products I have. And it makes me sad because I am really reluctant every time. I, I mean, there, there's some stuff here, like I said, that I, I really want to pull back. So when I speak on that, something that made me really upset. So I got some of the Erica Jane collection with Too Faced. And I got Polite Lips because I don't really have anything in this shade. I'm not a huge nude lip fan and I kind of like pink a little bit more. I like a little bit more color on my lips. So this is tame for me. I have the lip injection and I love that with the glitter. That, I don't know what they did with that lip injection. It does something fantastic where it turns my lips pink and you almost don't even notice the glitter after a little while. It just looks fabulous and I love how it feels. This guy on the other hand, I love it. I love how it smells when I first apply it. Something as it sits on my lips, it just dries and irritates the daylights out of my lips. I don't know if there's an ingredient in here that I'm sensitive to. It's really frustrating because otherwise I like this. I, I'm gonna say it, I like this. I enjoy this product. I would have loved it if it worked. I, when I first put it on, I was like, sign me up. I want more Too Faced lipsticks and lip glosses and let's, let's give these all a try. I also cannot wear they're liquid lip. I, I can't. There's something in it that just, again, I, I don't know if it's an ingredient that I'm sensitive to. I haven't run across this with other products. So I, it just makes me sad. Also the glitter is, it's glitter. I'm going to talk about two other lip glosses here in a second that I feel the same about. So it feels gritty on my lips. Oddly, the glitter and the lip injection does not, but I think that has to do with it almost seems to dissolve. Again, that product is just weird. I, I love the Lip Injection Extreme, which I'm pretty sure is what that is. It, for me, that exfoliates my lips, but in a beautiful way. I had a, a small size of the Lip Injection Extreme and just, I loved it. And that was why I got the, the bright pink Erica Jane one, because I'm like, you know, I have my love-hate relationship for, you know, Erica Girardi and Erica Jane. I, I'm a Real Housewives fan, kind of dwindling in recent recent years. So I thought it was kind of cool and I was like, you know, kind of support it. It's kind of a crossover into, you know, into my downtime watching, but it didn't, it's got to go. It doesn't work for me. It makes me sad every time I try to wear it. It really does. So something else that makes me sad, this is a Tarte and I'm looking to see exactly what it's called. It's their Quench Lip Rescue and I have it in nude. When I first had my daughter... I had this in rose from Sephora and I, I love these guys. I absolutely love the formula. I love how it wears. I, in 10 weeks, I wore down that entire rose. This is a sample size. Nude doesn't look like anything on my lips, which to me wouldn't really bother me because I like, I like this. It's not as good as my bite products. Those are a little bit more intensive, but it, it does good things. The problem with this is it moves. It's it's a very you can you can see you can see the dents. It's a very moist product. It's very I don't want to say oily because that's wrong, but it has oils and other things in it. It just doesn't hold and using it, I feel like it's been getting everywhere. And I think I'm gonna break it. I don't know that I'm gonna declutter it. I want to. I want I want to because I feel like I'm not gonna do it justice. The packaging is beautiful. I might I might keep it just for the packaging. I might. 
I'm like, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna just circle, circle around the camera and to prove that I really like it. So Alta has different, is this called the same thing? For some reason, this is called the Glide and Glow Buttery Lipstick. This is from Ulta. It comes in a different tube. And I have this one in Pink Tutu, which I absolutely love. I have the MAC Shade Craving in their Amplified Lip. And it is more of a matte version of this, which is probably why I love it. I was a little upset when I was swatching and realized it's the same color. This guy, I was on a crusade to completely use up, but I like it. I don't want to repurchase it quite yet, so I... I've held off but it is on my lips it feels like it's the same formula so it feels like one's from Sephora and one's from Ulta and they're just packaged and branded a little differently but I love them I, I can't say enough good things they're absolutely wonderful products and I would I would recommend them they're not gonna save your lips if you're super dry but they're gonna they're gonna help you all right so this guy this is my Lancome I love this formula. It's like a gloss, it's like a stain, it's not transfer proof, but it sticks around. This color in particular though, doesn't work as well as my other three. And the orange shade, I have an orange shade from Bite in a stain form that I love. And I have the Lisa Eldridge Velvet Morning that just, those who stay in my purse, they never leave my purse, I use them that frequently. I forget what this one was called, but it's number 515, and it's the, I am going to butcher this. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My my French heritage is not going to shine through and save me on this one. It's the Le Absolu Lacor. I have no idea. Like I said, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna butcher it. I have a soft spot for Lancome. I always have. I have an aunt who used it. The scent of these products just, it hits me. It hits me. It hits a place in home, and I am sad to get rid of this. I mean, this is another one I'm almost tempted to be like, no, I'm just going to keep it and not use it and it's going to go bad and I'm going to have to throw it away. Uh, I just, I don't reach for it because I have others that I love so much more. I'm going to put it aside. We're, we're, we're going to put it aside in the pile. It's, it's, it's in the pile. It's done. And these hurt. These, these hurt. The Becca Liquid Crystal Lip Topper Glow Glosses. These are the two I have left. This is Opal and Jade, which I thought I had lost. So what is now my daughter's room used to be my home office. And what is now her bathroom, it used to be my bathroom because I get up earlier than my husband to go to work and I didn't want to wake him. So we had separate first world problems. But uh, I had this buried under some towels with another, with a Chanel lip gloss that, it, not lip gloss, lipstick that I love. I thought I had lost and I was so upset. I got this guy first. So this is the same thing. It's the Liquid Crystal Lip Topper by Becca in Champagne Dream and Bellini. I had all of these. I got this dude first and before it even showed up in the mail from Sephora, I around Christmas time, I was home with my daughter on a Shopping while nursing and hormonal binge ordered all of them. And I love them. I I love these. I love these. I love these. I love these. I, I can't even. I got rid of the amethyst one because all it showed up out of my lips was, was purple. It didn't. Uh, it didn't really. And I'm sorry I say purple. No, it, all it showed up on my lips was blue. It didn't. The amethyst really didn't carry through. <sighs> I have the, the pink one, which is like the shell and something that looks pretty close to this, but I like this one better. They smell, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna open it up because I, I gotta smell them. Oh, these hurt. Look at that, look at that, look at that shimmer, look at that. I'm gonna smell it. They smell exactly like a lip gloss that I had when I was elementary school, maybe junior high. I can't tell you what it was, but the, I opened this and I smelled it and ooh, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. Like this this brings these bring me to such an emotional place. Like I I feel like whatever it is they smell exactly like must have been glittery too. Like somehow somehow these struck a nerve before I even had them in my hand. And I had to have them all. And these are the only two I have left. I can't remember if there were five or six. 
Sephora was trying to get rid of them and had them 50% off. So it was like, I basically got half of them for free. I don't wear them. I, I, I don't wear them. I don't reach for them. The glitter is chunky. It, they look great. They look fantastic. They don't look professional in any way, shape, or form. I, I mean, I couldn't... In my day job, there are things I could not wear these to. I mean, I could wear them on a daily basis. I do work from home a lot. I could wear them at home. I just... They sit there and I don't use them. And I kind of feel like... I feel like they're emotional baggage. I feel like they are tapping into something emotionally that I have not released. And maybe I need to have a special releasing ceremony for these guys so I can let them go. But they are beautiful. I just... Uh, again, it's, it's hard to part with some of these because there is some emotional attachment to them. I mean, the, the Claire, the Clarence stains, I, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like I make makeup purchases at times when I'm emotional, which probably isn't a great thing because it probably explains why I have spent more money than anyone should spend on makeup and made some bad decisions on makeup. But at the same time, I've discovered some really beautiful products. And like I said, I I have a love for these. And maybe they're going to be the same as, you know, maybe they're going to, I'm going to treat them the same as the, the Tarte Quench. And maybe I'm going to find a place to put them and honor them and release them when I'm ready. I know, I know, I know. I know. Been talking about, you know, talking about some of the stuff I've been doing with essential oils and working through some things. And I think those might represent something from my childhood that I haven't tapped into and I'm not ready for. Like I said, I I'm literally trying not to tear up right now. Just the smell of them. Mmm. Mmm. Like I wish I knew what they tapped into. I, I wish I knew what about them is affecting me. So left, I've got some eyeshadows which are making me real sad. And I've got some mascaras. And I'm wondering which is gonna be easier for me to rant about. <laughs> These kind of hurt. I'm not gonna... <sighs> okay, the reason you're not seeing any blushes is because I love all of my blushes. I'm very careful and very selective purchasing blushes. I'm very much a blush person. If I had to say, I probably love blushes the most, followed by lips and then eyes. Um, mascara for me is very utilitarian. I need it because I love my lashes. They're thick, they're long, but they start out dark and get very blonde at the end, which makes them look super short. They also stick straight forward. So if I don't curl them, they brush up against my glasses, which is super annoying because I have lash marks on my glasses. And I just, mas mascara to me, I'm not looking for volume. I'm not generally looking for lengthening. I'm looking for dark, black color like I want I want dark as night color when there's no moon and no stars that is what I'm looking for from a mascara I'm also looking for smudge proof budge proof flake proof there are two mascaras that I have found that 100% fit the bill and I hear Sephora is going to be having their VIB sale real soon and someone happens to be a rouge and is going to be taking advantage on restocking her Clinique Longwear, which is fantastic. And I'm going to pick up, because I am I do need to get new mascara, because it's bad to keep using them for more than six months. And the ones I'm on are, I've been using for too long and need to replace anyway. And the Estee Lauder Double Wear. I want to compare those two. I have a feeling that my more recent discovery of the Estee Lauder Double Wear is going to win. So I'm going to start with the mascara since I'm talking about it. Dear Lord. All right, I'm going to pull out a brush. I am so disappointed in this particular one. I am. I almost want to give it another try, but I, I know it's not going to work. Maybelline Full and Soft Waterproof Mascara. I find that waterproof mascaras, because I just got mascara on the leg there, are actually worse <laughs> in a lot of times in terms of smudging for some reason than the Dawn Waterproof. And I've also discovered recently since I've been on this journey to find new mascaras, I've worn the Clinique for like 10 years. And 
again, when I thought it was disappearing, I, I was able to order two more from Clinique and then it kind of vanished and I used those up and then I was trying to use other things. <sighs> I love the brush. Like this, this is my brush. This, this right here, let's if I can get a little better. There we go. This is my brush. This is what I want my brush to look like. I like a bristly brush. I like it to catch every lash and a brush like this, honestly, I don't get clumps because it brushes every lash and it separates and it defines and it's beautiful. This stuff, I'm so mad. I'm so mad because I was hoping this would be a good dupe for the Clinique because honestly on the brush, the formula seems very similar. It's a drier formula. And I realize the Clinique isn't, when I say that, isn't dry, but it just, it, it had a very similar feel. This stuff smudges like crazy. It makes my lashes look beautiful, but within the first two hours, I, I see smudging and no, 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 no. You can't call yourself a waterproof mascara and not be waterproof. When I say smudgy, I, that's when my eyes water. I'm not even talking about when my eyelids get oily and I can't wear it when I wear my, when I wear my Becca under eye brightening what's it's not. Uh, I have been wearing this next mascara, or I shouldn't say that. I wore this next mascara in college until I discovered Clinique. And I was probably wearing it before that in high school. Dum, dum, dum. Great lash. This, <laughs> go Maybelline. This might be every girl's favorite. And I recently was reading an article that said, the waterproof one is much proof. I love how they all say hydrofuge. I'm noticing that on things now. I like that this one says waterproof so I know what it means. <sighs> I pick this up. Colors track me every time. And I remember that it smudged like crazy when I was wearing it. But I thought maybe things have changed. <sighs> I forgot about the brush. This is not a bristly brush. This brush is a spiral and it clumps the daylights out of my lashes horribly to the point where I don't even want to see a wear test to see if it smudges because it clumps. I have a feeling that it's just my lashes. I know that there are people out there who find this to be fabulous, who think it's great and love it and it works wonderfully. I think their lashes might be different than mine. I know that Great Lash Now has a number of different styles and different style brushes. I'm not gonna be trying them. I, here's the problem. You can spend a fortune trying out drugstore brand mascaras, hoping to find that perfect mascara for you and replace a more expensive mascara. You are gonna spend more money doing that than just buying the more expensive mascara. So if, you, if the mascara that works for you is double wear, which I think is like $27 a tube, and believe me, I don't throw them out every four to six months like they recommend, I let that thing go. Longer than that, risking my eyeballs because it is so expensive. I just, to me, it's not worth it because I'm not gonna like it. I'm gonna try to replace it with something else and I'm just gonna keep spending. And that is the antithesis of things I'm trying to do right now. These next two make me angry, make me real angry. I tried this one on a recommendation, Last Blash Volume Waterproof. And this one, I knew I was in to be angry. I knew what I was in for with the brush. It is one of those plastic bristly brushes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, which you'd think would be great, I'm saying through gritted teeth. As long as I make sure I wipe off all the excess, I don't get huge gloopy globules, globules, globules on my lashes. This makes me angry because it is smudge proof. And when I say that, it's hard to remove. It is foolproof, smudge proof. The problem is the brush and the fact that it irritates my eyes. But that's a whole other story. The brush, my eyelids, and, I, and maybe I'll have a video where I show you, but my, my eyelids kind of poof out where my lashes are a little bit. And the bristles aren't long. I have bristly brushes that are lo have longer bristles and don't have this problem, but these things, when I get at the roots of my lashes and up all over my eyelids and then I'm trying to clean it up and it's messing up my makeup and it's irritating my day. And this formula irritated the daylights out of my eyes. And I'm mad because this is like, 
What was, what was this? $12? All right, drugstore stuff is getting pricey. And this is why I say if you've got a higher end that works for you, just stick with it because you're going to keep spending money. And I, I don't want to. I... I was so disappointed because the people who said this doesn't budge were absolutely right. It just, the brush and the fact that it irritated my eyes. I, I've got some of my favorite eyeshadows that will irritate my eyes at times. And I will power through those because they work beautifully and I love them. With the smudging that it actually does in application. I, sorry, sorry, cover girl. Sorry. I have a similar problem with this next one, which also makes me angry. So this is Smashbox's super fan. This is the second sample I've had because I remember the first one, or not sample, this is, a, this is a smaller size, because the first one I remember liking, just not repurchasing because I have mascaras I like more. What I did not remember was the stupid plastic bristly brush doing the same thing the CoverGirl brush does. I wore this, we went to our state's fair recently and I wore this and it was beautiful. I, I was sweating, I was moist and this guy stayed on and if they gave it a different brush, I would love it. I, I would probably purchase it in full size again and again and again if it weren't for the brush. Ooh, insert anger there. Dang you brush. So the next thing I am decluttering is from Smashbox as well. I actually love Smashbox. I, I want to say I'm not dragging any of these brands. Every single one of these brands has products that I will rave about all day long because they're absolutely fabulous. And I love them and I use them and just no words for some of these. The problem is some products don't work so well for me. This is the last cover shot that I have. This guy survived multiple declutters because of this. This is the Ablaze palette. This shade here changed my life. Problem is I have a similar shade in Spice in my Lorac Mega Pro 4 and a much redder shade that I love and performs even better from a palette I'm going to talk about next. These guys, I don't know what it is. I loved them when I got them. I had gotten out of wearing makeup and for many, many years, I don't even know if I was wearing mascara. I was in a really low place and not taking care of myself. And part of that was, was sort of giving up on using a lot of the products that I loved and the makeup that I loved, mostly because I felt what was the point. I was going to work and I was coming home and I put on a mascara or lip gloss if I was going out with my husband. He he loves me whether I wear makeup or not, you know. He's he's he's, he's guy. He's he's not gonna be like, hey, fantastic eyeshadow. Like I'm they just he, he's not gonna say that to me. But for work it just it felt like what was the point I sit in a cube. Now, that has changed in the last several years and I've gotten back into makeup. Urban Decay, Naked 2 and Naked 3 used to be the palettes that I did have and I would rock and play with on occasion because I wasn't experimenting with anything else. I ended up really not liking either one and feeling like on my eyelids that I was getting the same look no matter what shades I used. I ended up decluttering them and just kind of being really, really out of it. So when I started getting back into it, I love these cover shop palettes because they're small. I love the colors in them. They just, performance wise, they don't last. And I use my Too Faced Shadow Insurance and that stuff, I can put on a Lorac eyeshadow and I can wear that stuff for 16 hours and it doesn't move. Uh, same thing with my NARS palette. I have the Anastasia Beverly Hills Riviera palette and it's fantastic. I love my Big Jaclyn Hill palette. It, they Those eyeshadows, for some reason, they just perform for me and they last. This guy doesn't. And I kept this guy because I had nothing like it. I had nothing to dupe the shades. And now I do in formulas I like more. 
So I'm going to say goodbye to it. And I'm going to say thank you to Smashbox because Smashbox really did open up the doorway for me to get back into makeup that I love and playing with makeup and using makeup and experimenting. So it's all Smashbox's fault. We're all going to blame Smashbox for this. Mm-hmm. Yep. I have two Urban Decay singles here. I have decluttered other Urban Decay singles for lack of performance. I have one more that I'm going to be decluttering as well that I did not bring down. I wore Scratch today, and the reason Scratch looks like this is I tried to depot it so I could put it in a Z palette because in here, I'm at a point in my life where I'm not reaching for these. They are gorgeous. Like this guy here, I'm tempted to keep and see if it works as a highlighter because it is this beautiful pink gold shift that's just, ugh. Ugh, but I'll never reach for it because I have other, I have two highlighters and I'm not a huge highlighter fan. Scratch I wore today, they don't last. They don't grip to eye primers. They don't grip to my eyelid. They're, they're gone. Like I have hood, very hooded eyes and in the crease, they don't stick around. And it's really frustrating. And I think it could be aged. These are older. I've had these for a really long time now because I found that Urban Decay singles performed a lot better than the Urban Decay palettes. So it could be that I'm being really unfair to these guys because I, I mean, I love them. You can't see, you can't see the dip. It's really hard to see the dip in here. I can see it very clearly when I look at it because there was a time where when I was wearing these, these were all I was wearing. I can see the dip, dip in this guy. They're beautiful. They're absolutely gorgeous. They don't have much color payoff and they don't last. And I think it's time for them to go. I, I think it's that they're old and they're probably past their prime. Oh, that hurts. X just hurts because I, I could totally sit as a highlighter shade and it being beautiful. But I have lunch money from ColourPop that I really, really love. And I have a gold highlighter in a NARS palette that is so natural and blends in so well that it just gives me the glow that I want. It's time to let those go. And then dum dum dum, to the end we have come. I have tried to declutter this last product multiple times to the point where I have thrown it in the garbage and days later fished it out. I wanna love this because everyone loves this. It has a mini palette, well it has three mini palettes, that are based off of it, one of which I own, the only one of which that I liked, that I love. Like, I travel with it, I will use it, I will mix it up with other palettes, like, like I, I love it, but this big guy, I, I don't know what to say other than it makes my eyelids muddy and it does not work for me and the shades are so wrong and I look at them and even the ones that are supposed to be warmer, just everything seems very cooler and very grungy. And for some reason on me, it all makes me look like I have a black eye. The way the colors look in the pan aren't the way they look for a lot of them when you go to use them. The mattes are beautiful, but I just... I, I, it doesn't work for me. Mm. Urban Decay, I'm so sorry. Urban Decay, much like Smashbox, started a, started a higher end makeup journey with me when I was in college. And I lived for their eye primers and their eyeshadows. I, I just, I love their products, their glosses. And now I go to use them and I'm just like, no, no, no. They just, they don't work for me. Tried to use what was for years and years and years and years my favorite eye primer and it made me look 10 years older. It just, no matter how little I applied, my eyelids, I'm 37, my eyelids are starting to get some thinness and some crepiness and some not so juiciness. And it just it accentuated it to the point where it just looked wrong and made me really sad. I picked up their, one of their new lip glosses because I felt in the store, I hate, I hate the packaging personally. I get it and I get the aesthetic they were going for, but it's not my kind of packaging. I miss the squeezy tube that they used to have 
with the sil silicone end. I don't know if it was silicone, but like, like the rubbery end. That I loved. And I loved it in Naked, which was impossible to get. Like, you had to... You had to call Sephora to see when a shipment of that was coming in and you had to be like the first person there it was going to sell out. And I loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. And I don't remember it being sticky and I tried the new one because when I opened it up and smelled it, it smelled like that original that I loved. The color looked like that original that I loved. But it was a sticky mess on my lips. Which was semi awful So... You see, you see these part of the part of the reason I have this end and not this end pushed through is because mm, forget, forget about that. You see that sunset? You see that wine glass? You see that sunset? You see, you see, you ooh, and that might be a sunrise. I don't, I don't know exactly where that picture is, but you see, you see those oranges? You see those reds, ready oranges? I live for a good red orange. You're not gonna see it in here because I poorly deep palated it. So here are the shades. I'm just gonna pass it right on through. Mm -hmm. So Riff is okay. As good as gone is okay, but I can dupe those with multiple palettes that I have. Still shot is okay. I absolutely love it. I can dupe it with other palettes that I like more. Weekender, the reason there is the dip and you can kind of see it in it that there is, is because I had to put that down first to even get these to stick, no matter what primer I used or no primer. Guilt Trip didn't give color payoff. Ignite and Accelerate I should have loved. Not so much. I don't know if you had to use these wet, but for the ones I tried to, I tried to use even with a little fix plus on a brush, I kind of felt like I got hard pan. Punk is a really cool shade. There's a part of me that almost wants to depot it too. But it's a little too grungy for my eyes. It just, I don't know if it's my eye shape. I don't know if it's how the colors lay down and work with my skin tone. It just never looked right. Drift makes me sad because Drift, I wanted it to look like it looks like in here. It does not. It does not look like that. It is like, there's false advertising right there. Hellride is good. The, mat, the mats are decent. Wild Heart, again, really spotty, really patchy, no matter how I tried to use it with a finger, with a brush, wet, dry, didn't matter. The only color that I absolutely die for, and would love to find in a formula that I like more, is Baja. It's an orange red, I, Broke a chunk out of it depotting it, but I depotted it. God damn it. And I love it. I absolutely like it's in my Z palette. I will use it. It's similar to a shade in my Lorac Mega Pro 4 called Spice, but it's different enough and I like it enough and it looks just right, lightly applied with my skin tone to just be absolutely fantastic. I am going to say goodbye to this guy. Like I said, I have tried to say goodbye to this guy so many times. Like, like, look at Big Sky. Look at that, look at that in the light. In the, in the light, so I have a light, I have a, a light box that is giving really good light so that you can see these. My naked eye, this does not look like this. It looks so much more, see when I say grungy, what I, what I really mean to say and what I'm really driving at is gray. There is a grayness to all of this and I think that's what makes it not work for me. I think there is a coolness, even to what seems warmer, that flips this from something that works well with my skin tone into something that doesn't. And I think what works for me is warmer tone. And if it's cooler in tone, it's gotta be bright. Like that brightness just has to be amplified. So the way this looks on camera and the way it's looking under my lighting, hi, I'm just gonna, like, that's what I want it to look like. Let me see if I can. I have so many lights in here. Let's see if I can. Like, I'm trying to. I don't know if I can turn the lighting down enough for you to be able to see what I see with the naked eye. And I think, I think for me, what it comes down to with this is I've heard really great things from people who absolutely love, and this is a ride or die palette. And it's something where, you know, I've heard if they lost, you know, all of their palettes this would be something that they picked back up. 
And then I've heard the other side of it where people are like, it just doesn't work no matter what I do. I want to love it. I want to love it and I want to use it and I want these colors to be magical and fantastic for me. But the colors that I do like the most, I can dupe. Like Hellride, I have, let's see, Merlot. Is it, I can't remember if it's called Blackberry or Mulberry. I have shades in multiple rock palettes that just, just make me not want to reach for this for one, one shade. That work better, that I love more. Wild Heart makes me angry. It makes me angry that this one did not work for me. Because it is, it's beautiful. Like, I want them to work. Stranded and Blaze, I wanted to work. Now, honestly, on Stranded, I forget what it's called. I have the, it's got the bluer packaging, the mini of this. It has a gold that outperforms Stranded by leaps and bounds. Like, I can't even explain how much better. My Lorac Pro 4 has a gold candlelight that if you want a gold that you don't need any moisture to put on your eye and just have it mm, lock in and be beautiful and be bright and just perfect, that's what I go toward. So I don't know what to say. Blaze, is, yeah, Blaze is supposed to be more duochrome. I can see some hard panning in there just from touching it. I've run into that with, with a couple of things lately where if I swatch, I, I know it's hard pan that I have to take off and that's super annoying. But you can see that I have, I have continued to try and try and try and try this palette. I wanted this green to work. In Wisconsin, there's this team called the Green Bay Packers, green and gold. I wanted this green to work for game day makeup. You know what green works? Not this one, not this one with the gold sparklies in it. No, what works is the green from, from the, mm, I know, I know people are going to be mad if me to say it. I know, I know she's been hashtag canceled for a lot of people, but Jaclyn Hill's big palette with Morphe, that green outperforms this all day long in terms of pigmentation, in terms of wear. And again, maybe it's just me. Maybe everyone's skin is different. My eyelids are oily. It, that could very well be factoring into this. But like I said, this palette makes me angry because I wanted it to work. I fell in love with it the moment I saw it and all of the marketing photos and it just, mm, it, I feel like I need to have a memorial service. I feel like this palette is a death for me. I feel like my hopes and dreams and getting something that for me was very colorful because this, this is far more colorful than a lot of things I had based on what you see in the pan. More purple, you know, I, I just, I wanted this to work so badly and the fact that it didn't really stinks. I was at a Sephora and a JCPenney and I, online this had come out and was available, but it wasn't on the shelf in store. And I remember asking the girl, I was like, do you have these? Are they for sale yet? Can I see it? And they weren't for sale yet, but she's like, I'm gonna pull out the tester. You can swatch, you can play with. And I just, I was swatching and I was loving and I was like, oh, that's beautiful. And then I put it on my eyes and it just womp womps. It, it again, it makes me sad. Like, like look at, look at Punk. Look at Good Is Gone. I'm really in a brown phase right now where I really like browns. I want to love those. And then I put them on my eye. And again, the tone against my natural skin tone is just, it doesn't work. And it looks muddy. And I don't like it. And this one hurts. This one feels painful. And this, like I said, this is my last product. It's my last product. First world problems, man. First world problems right here. But I think I'm gonna take my toys. And I'm gonna go home. There are some things here that I'm very sad about, though. Like I'm super, super sad about this. I really want this palette to work. But when I pulled it off of off of my organizer in my bathroom today, and the packaging is beautiful. Let's just, let's just take a minute and talk about the packaging. Like that's again, it's just it beautiful. It speaks to me on so many levels. I'm just disappointed in the way it worked out. I felt better 
and I felt lighter when I pulled this off because it does create angst and resentment in having a product that I loved and I wanna love and I wanna use and I wanna have it be beautiful and I know that every time I try to use it, it just fuels a disappointment. So if you have products in your life or you have things that are just fueling disappointment, just don't hang on to them and don't keep trying to make them work because seriously, there is a part of me that wants to keep trying to make this work that wants to figure out, because now it's like a challenge, how to make it work. And if maybe it's, well, maybe I use the shade I really like from it with other, other shades from another palette. Well, then I might as well just dupe from another palette. I have other browns in many other palettes. I can figure it out. I have the blue cased sister to this that has colors that I love more in terms of the browns in it and the tones. It's a much warmer, brighter palette and, and I've traveled with it and it's it's never been hit or miss whereas this has just always been a miss and I'm, I'm sorry Urban Decay I feel like I'm betraying my roots when I have to declutter your stuff again with, with the eyeshadows I can't remember when I bought these and I know I have had them for so long that they're I mean it says 24 months these things are well over you know these little guys are well over two years old I would say more like five maybe six years old, these are long past their prime. And that's probably why they're not working. They're probably losing their magic. And that's not their fault. And am I replacing them? No, I'm not gonna replace them because I have palettes that I love with shades that I love and that are magical. And there's no reason for me to repurchase something that's just gonna sit because I'm using palettes. On mascaras. There is no reason for me to waste money on drugstore thinking I'm going to save money when I know what I love. We're buying stuff with brushes that I don't love. I should just buy the products that I love and use the daylights out of them until they're gone and be happy with them. Now, yes, sometimes, on my case of point here, sometimes you gotta try some things. You gotta, play, you gotta play with some things to figure out what you like. I have, I don't have, I, I'm not a junkie. I only buy what I'm gonna use. I only buy colors that speak to me. I have three others. I got a sample of, the, of one of these guys from Sephora in a shade that I never thought I would wear that I put on and fell in love with and immediately went out and purchased the full size because I was gonna use up that small size. I have a, a dupe for a lip gloss that I love that's in a different formula from Laura Geller that actually matches one of these. And I like this a little bit better. Lip stains. This reignited my passion for lip stains. And I have since found a lip stain and a lipstick that I can use like a lip stain that I absolutely adore door and love and I wouldn't have I wouldn't have found those products if these products you know I've got a bronzer that I love that I wouldn't have tried if I hadn't gotten into bronzer these guys opened a door for me to find products that are ride or die so I I'm not gonna I can't bag on this stuff because all of these I look at all of these products and all of these products here I mean this dude here, this dude here led me to the sister palette that I love, that I love and I have traveled with and I, I use all the time and will probably pan. I love so much that I wouldn't have found if I hadn't tried this guy. Is there a part of me that goes, I wish I would have found that I don't adore this much, much sooner so I could return it? Yes. Mm hmm. I don't do this for a living. I don't make money for makeup. I just want to share my love and I'm sharing some stuff I'm decluttering. And very soon, I'm gonna be sharing some stuff that I'm not decluttering and will probably pan because I love so much. My favorites that aren't going anywhere. And then I come back to these guys. I almost feel like I should keep this and frame it, like shadow box it. Because these guys, they reignited a passion that I have for makeup right along with these guys 
I mean, I, I am very grateful that I'm able to have these in my life and I'm very grateful that I've been able to use them and let them find a home in my home because makeup makes me happy. And I know I know what people say, I, people who don't like makeup can't understand how makeup makes you happy. But for those of us who do, just look at this. Look at this, pumpkin spice season is coming. Look at this, look, I got a, the brown in here is almost like the browns I like in here. This guy, if he were just a little redder, like I love, I love them so much until I got the more ready one. Oh, no. oh, but I mean, look, look at this. The sad part is I can dupe all of these in formulas that I like more. I, that really is the sad part. But these guys started it. Smashbox started it. Smashbox was with me at the beginning. Smashbox is reignited. I have Smashbox products that I love, and I'm saying that, and I'm. A little bit mad at you, Smashbox. Your lip glosses, we gotta talk about your lip glosses because there is a lip gloss that you need to bring back. I always called it Candide because I thought it sounded better than Candid. But man, I want the original formula of Candid. I want, I want the sample formula of Candid that I got when my husband and I were first dating and you know he'd be dropping me off at the office and I'd give him a kiss and when, when he'd pick me up when we were carpooling. Yeah, he'd still be wearing the glitter from that because he couldn't get it off. I, I want that lip gloss back. I miss that lip gloss. <sighs> I could rant about that all day long. I, I miss that thing and the glitters weren't too big. They were super fine. Ooh, I miss that lip gloss. I think I have dreams about that lip gloss. And then the formula changed and I was sad, but not sad enough to get rid of it. And then the color kind of changed along with the formula and then it disappeared altogether. And, yeah, come on, Smashbox. Let's let's, let's have a discussion. I love I love your products. I love your products. Sadly, I, I don't I don't use your 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 primers anymore because my skin has changed. I have to try your primerizer. I'm betting I'm gonna love the primerizer, which is why I haven't tried it because I don't want to love it. <laughs> uh, so I am gonna call this. I'm I'm I've cleared out a good amount of stuff, and some of it makes me very sad. Some of it makes me very happy to see go though, because it's gotta go. Because either it's Clump City, or sadly there's something in it that irritates my eyes. Again, this makes me sad because the formula is actually fantastic. I can complain about the brush all I want, but the brush does exactly what I want with the exception of depositing pigment on my eyelids where I don't want it and irritating my eyes, but it doesn't budge. Oh, cover girl, man. Breaking my heart. All right. So I am yawning because I am tired and I have been talking for an hour. Let's let's be honest. I could talk for a whole lot longer than that, but I want to make sure that this gets uploaded tonight. <sighs> Non-essential oil. Non-essential oil uh, discussion. Kind of want to vary it up. I kind of want to put some stuff on YouTube. So I might, I might break down and actually put this on YouTube as well on my YouTube channel. I keep meaning to swap over formats because a lot of the videoing I like to do, I'd rather do. I almost think it's better suited to a YouTube to to a YouTube channel, to my YouTube channel that I don't use, as opposed to putting on Facebook and a life by Angie M. I want to be more than essential oils. I don't want to talk more about makeup. I don't think I'm doing get ready with me anytime soon. I far from a makeup. Uh, beauty guru. I do have gurus that I love. One who just got married, Miss Samantha Ravendahl. I suggest you follow her on the YouTubes. And uh, her, her curse of loving products and having them discontinued is also my curse. And sadly, some of those products she's loved, I have loved as well, that have disappeared. So I, I think we both have to quit loving them so that other people don't miss out. And I just, and can we just talk about can you just talk about this packaging? Yeah, yeah, right there. Either way it feels. Like, see the way it sounds when you rubber nail across it? Yeah, that's my childhood in a nutshell. So, I mean, Smashbox's marketing is right right towards me. So I'm gonna say have a good night. You can't see me waving, so I'll wave like this. Ah, and I will call it. And I don't know. Oh man, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I, I almost forgot something else I'm going to declutter is a book. 
because <laughs> because it annoys me. It annoys me, it annoys me, it annoys me. Can I, get it, can I even get it under here? I got that at Target because it spoke to me, how not to always be working. And then I read it. I'm a creative person. I like to write. I like art. I've read it. It makes me feel like stuff in my life that I don't consider work is work. It, it counteracts a lot of the self-improvement, self-development, whatever woo -woo stuff you want to call it nowadays, whatever the term du jour is. Uh, back when I was, back when I was young and many years ago, it was self-help. I mean, it, this, this book is actually counter to a lot of the self-help work I'm doing. It makes me really resistant. It is just, it, it's going. It, it's going because it's counterproductive for me right now. And I don't, I don't gel or jive with things that are in it. I, sometimes there are things that work great for you and sometimes there aren't. If this is something that you picked up at Target as well and you find absolutely fantastic, feel free to drop something in the comments. Let me know how it, you know, let me know. Let's have a dialogue. Let me know how it's helped you or how it's worked for you. Maybe I'm looking at it wrong. Maybe I need a mindset adjustment. I don't know. But it's it's going because it's been sitting on my shelf and I just feel like it's antagonizing me every time I look at it. So with that, I'm going to sign off and have a good night.